Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another Tag Tuesday, this time with the behind the scenes of YouTube tag. I'm trying to do more tags because I literally have a list of just all these tags that I've been wanting to get to and just haven't had time to. So I'm gonna try to do for the next few weeks or so a tag video every Tuesday. So let me know down below if you like this idea, if you wanna keep seeing these tags, and if there's a tag I haven't done yet, which one you want me to do. So this tag I originally found from Katie Marie, so I'll link her channel and her tag video down below. And the original tag creator is Annette's Makeup Corner, so of course I will also link her video and her channel down below. This tag has 13 questions all about what goes on behind the scenes of YouTube, of like if the title didn't give it away. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into question number one. Question number one is what was the hardest part about starting a channel? I think it was le like legitimately seeing myself on camera. When I first started this channel, I hated watching my videos back. I didn't like hearing my voice. I didn't like editing because I, I, I was so self-critical and I still am to a degree, but not nearly as bad as I was. Like I really tend to pick myself apart and that was a part of a reason also why I really wanted to like do this because it would get me more used to seeing myself and becoming more comfortable with myself because I, I used to just be so self-critical, especially about my appearance and the way I talked and kind of the way I came across. So I really feel this channel has helped me get over that hurdle to a huge extent. Like I'm definitely a lot more comfortable with myself and with a lot more things as a result. But I think honestly for me, that was the biggest hurdle was having to like get used to seeing myself on camera and editing myself and just begin that process. It wasn't even like I'm afraid of other people to see me. It was like I was afraid of me to see me like in post. Question number two is what equipment do you use? So I just recently did a whole vanity tour where I talk about most of the equipment and link it. I'll also link everything down below. Currently I am filming on a Canon G7X which is the camera like a lot of big YouTubers use as their vlog camera. Uh, so it's honestly, it's a great camera. I really like it. The only issue is that um, the mic isn't the best. Best. The mic isn't the best. And you, it, ugh. the reason people say it's a vlog camera is because you can't plug anything like in to the camera. So I have to record my audio separately and just like sync them up in post. So I really like this camera. I think it's a great like bump up camera because I started with my iPhone. Honestly, if you have an iPhone, like you've got a great camera right there and there are mics like I when I first started out I was using my camera from my iPhone and I had a lav mic that I could plug into the iPhone so that that's not a bad setup at all but when I bumped up and actually wanted to buy a real cam real camera I wanted to buy a camera like a separate camera this is the one that I looked into I did a lot of research on it and I bought it on Amazon my mic is actually a blue mic which how messed up is the audio gonna get? This is the mic. <laughs> uh, I just, I plug this in to my laptop whenever I'm filming and I record the audio there and then I sync it up with the video. Other than that, I have um, a lighting setup that I show you in detail in the, the previous video that I mentioned. I have a ring light right in front of me and I have two umbrella lights right here and I have one light behind me and that's honestly been like the best lighting setup because that's what i struggled with a lot was just trying to figure out lighting and how to keep lighting consistent question number three is what editing program do you use and what did you start with so recently i've actually been using the trial like 30 60 day trial of final cut pro and i've really liked it i, I really like final cut pro and I know it's a big upfront cost and, and investment, but from what I've heard, once you purchase it the one time, like you have it for life. Like you get all the upgrades, all the updates, so you don't ever have to pay for it again. So I'm gonna stick with the trial program and see if I still like it, but that's something that I, I might be moving over to completely. Uh, Cause I, just, I love the way that it edits and works. It's, it's a great program and it's what majority of people use. I'm pretty sure like everyone big uses Final Cut Pro, at least on YouTube. I just, I don't want to know about the industry, but on YouTube, I feel like the, the standard is everyone. If you have a Mac, you use Final Cut. I think you can use it on PC. Don't quote me on that. I have no idea. 
I started out with iMovie. iMovie is great. I really only wanted to go to Final Cut because I've been doing this for over a year and I really wanted to do more with my editing and I felt like I was restrained a bit by iMovie but for starting out and for doing you can do the vast majority of things in iMovie so I think iMovie is like a great program and I was so great that that came with my MacBook because it's, it's a very powerful free piece of software you get with your Mac. It's pretty awesome. Question number four is did you have any experience with making videos before starting YouTube? No. <laughs> Not at all. Not even a little bit. Nope. I've done PowerPoints for like class. No videos. I literally had to like do the research and pretty much teach myself everything. I had no idea how to film. I had no idea about lighting, which you can very clearly see in a lot of my earlier videos. I had no idea about audio. My boyfriend was trying to help me with my audio quality before we actually got the mic. It's, it's been just a constant learning process, but I think that's part of the fun too. It's because it's fun to actually learn something new and keep me busy. Like I said, this is like my hobby. I love doing this. I love getting to look forward to working on my videos and my editing and everything. So I'm definitely never going to get to a point where like I know everything. Like there's always going to be something more to learn. But I love that I can always keep learning with this channel and since it's recorded, since there's like proof of each step of the way, I can clearly see my progress, which I think that's really cool. Question number five is on average, how long does it take you to edit? So if it's like a simple video and by simple, I mean something like this where I'm not throwing in pictures or filming on multiple days, this will probably take me about an hour, hour and a half maybe to edit. Um, cause I'm really just watching the video, the raw footage back and cutting it down like between each question. If I'm filming a weekly wow, that can take up to two hours depending on how many photos I have to put in and how much I talked, right? Um, and this isn't including thumbnail. Thumbnail takes me probably an extra 20 to 30 minutes because I edit it on, well, I have to take the screenshot from the video. I have to throw it onto my phone and edit it, throw it back onto my computer, throw it into Photoshop. So I, I do a bit with a thumbnail as well. But if it comes to just editing, uh, it can be anywhere between, I think the quickest I've ever done a video is between 45 minutes and two hours per video. Question number six is what was the worst technical accident you've had since starting your channel? I think the worst visible one, because uh, there's been a few little ones where like my camera or not my camera, like my microphone didn't pick up the audio. So I had um, a, a video here or there where the audio wasn't the best. I think the worst actual visible mistake was one of my first videos and I was still filming on my iPhone. The only downside is that with this camera, there is a, a viewfinder that pops up. So I can look into the viewfinder and see, oh, I'm in focus. It's on me. This is okay. But when you're filming on your iPhone, the back camera is the best camera. So for the most part, you can't see yourself unless you put like a mirror behind your iPhone to look at it. So there was a video I was filming that I really want to do an update to this summer. I'll link it up in the cards. But the majority of the video is just out of focus. <laughs> and I couldn't really fix it or cut it out because it was majority of the video. So I, I had to keep it in and it's probably like my worst video. But... The video itself holds true. I'm pretty sure it was like a foundation video about mixing or something. And I still, it was off Dermacol, I'm pretty sure. And I still use that foundation. I still love mixing it with the CoverGirl Vitalist. It just works the best during the summer because it's the best for withstanding through like sweat and a long work day. So I definitely want to redo that video when it gets to the summer again. But <laughs> like, I'm not going to take it down because it's, it's my past. Like, I don't want to like ignore the fact that I wasn't that great at videos when I started, but it, it is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Question number seven is, do you ever film something and not upload it? Yes, but not often. There have been a few videos where I filmed it and I haven't been happy with the quality, which now that I'm five videos a week, I like to plan and be enough ahead of time where if for any reason a video doesn't work out, I have a way to work around it or another video I can push up. The most recent example of this was actually New Year's. So I filmed a New Year's makeup look. I was trying to recreate the makeup look I did for New Year's 2018. Like it was a while ago. I did a really pretty makeup look and I wanted to do a tutorial because I don't think I did one that year. 
I mean, the holidays were kind of a blur. I was, I had a lot of family things. I was meeting the boyfriend's family. I was doing this, I was doing that. So I tried to film that tutorial in the morning before I went to like a family thing. And I watched the footage back and I could just tell I rushed, I rushed through it. Like it, it, it didn't look the best. And it wasn't that it didn't look the best. You could just tell that I was like rushing through it just to get something up. And I wasn't happy with it. I was like, I don't want to put something up like this where you can clearly tell I'm rushing just to get something up. And that's when I, I really realized that I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to push through and rush a video just to have something up. Like, I know I do videos Monday to Friday, but I never want it to seem like I'm just doing a video to get it up. And I mentioned that for eyeshadow videos, like... I see so many people come out with these like first impressions slash reviews immediately after a palette comes out and I guess I can see the appeal of that if you're wanting to buy that palette but for me and the way I view this channel I don't want something to go up like so quickly that's why I've been so kind of mad with first impressions because I feel like it doesn't give you the whole story it's not a full review it's something that people throw up immediately after they get PR so they can get the views on YouTube it's not a, a it's not a well-rounded review and that's something I struggle with because I never really want to do a first impression like that I always want to give my well-rounded fully informed review so I'm trying to work around that I'm trying to do some more Especially when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, some more first looks, maybe, so that I'm not falling behind in the videos I have to do, but also make sure I'm doing follow-ups because I never want to leave something at like a first impression like that without at least updating you because I feel like that's a big part of the reason why I stopped watching big channels because all they did was first impressions. Like, I don't care about your first impression. I want your full review. Question number eight is, do you write a script or plan what you're going to talk about? Not really. I never plan a script. I'll plan what I'm going to film. So like in my average eyeshadow palette review, I've got my big Google Doc where I have my calendar and I plan all my videos. But I don't film a script. The most I'll do is like I have, I want to do a video on the Riviera palette that I just picked up the other day. So I want to film look number one, look number two, look number three, swatches, and then my intro slash conclusion. So I'll like list all those out and as I film each one like I'll highlight it but I, I don't really have a script of what I want to talk about unless a product was like bad. Like if it's a foundation review and I tested it out for a few weeks and I'm taking notes, I'll have those notes with me and I'll keep an eye on them but I, I'm, not, I'm not writing like an actual script. Question number nine is actually a really good question and it's have you started talking differently since starting your YouTube channel? I'm pretty sure I have, um, especially since I've been the one to go back and edit my videos. Like I've definitely begun talking differently on camera. I, I don't know if this is fully translated into my regular everyday speak. Maybe I'll ask Alvin, maybe he'll know. But I know for a fact I've started talking differently on camera because there are ways that you say things and the way that you space out like your words or your sentences that makes it easier to edit <laughs> and I've learned that because there have been times where I tend to talk way too fast and I can't edit the video because like my mistakes are too close to the rest of the words and I can't cut it out. So I've definitely become a little bit more aware of what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. I still think it's me. Like, it's definitely still me on camera here talking, but I'm definitely just more aware of, I guess, the speed of what I'm saying and how I'm spacing out, like, my sentences and my thoughts. It actually helps me because now I think a bit more thoroughly about my thoughts before I say them. That way, <laughs> that way I save future Monica from future editing. <laughs> Sorry, future Monica. Question number 10 is what's the one thing that annoys you when editing yourself? And I feel like this is both a pro and a con. I, like I mentioned before, I do try to be more aware of like what I'm saying and how I space out my sentences so that I can edit between them if I need to. One thing that actually bugs me is the way I draw out the word and. <laughs> Like, it actually helps because I can cut it out very often, so I don't think you really see it that often. But if you watch, like, a lot of my videos, you hear me go, and... Or, like, it... I don't know if I can say it, just, like, when I'm thinking about it, but I draw out the word and a lot. And I say it fairly quickly. But I can cut it out because of 
<laughs> because of how I say it. But I tend to draw out the word and and I say it a lot. It's, I say it more than I say it like but. It's like my annoying little way of filling in space, right? So I cut out that a lot more often than you're seeing it and it bugs me. <laughs> and I can't really like, I don't know. I'm not really aware of what I'm saying yet. Like, I only hear it when I'm in post and I'm like, that's so annoying, Monica. I need to cut this out. Like, it's stop it. Question number 11 is, what is your biggest editing pet peeve in others' videos? I mean, I don't really want to nitpick because I, I, after going through it, I know how difficult editing can be. I really think the only thing that I'm bothered by is if there's a whole bunch of, like, stuff in the middle that they could have cut out that they didn't. Like, say I'm doing a get ready with me, and I'm like, boop ba doop ba doop boop oh, and I need to go get this lipstick, let me get this lipstick. And then instead of cutting to when they have the lipstick, they'll do this. So I have this lipstick, like, it's like, you can cut that out, and just cut straight to when you're holding the lipstick. I try to do that, unless it's like a long chatty get ready with me, and that's kind of the, the, the vibe that I'm going for. But if it's in like a, a regular video and you can tell that they're keeping all of this in to put the video over 10 minutes so they can like throw more ads in, I don't like that. I feel like the only pet peeve I have is when people aren't being concise for the, the sole purpose of filling up time so they, they can get more money in the ads. Because I don't know if you, if you guys know this, you can only add the mid-roll ads, so like an ad in the middle of the video, you can only add that if your video is over 10 minutes long. So there are plenty of people that will fill up time and fill up space with stuff that doesn't need to be there just so they can hit the 10 minute mark and so they can add more ads in and get money. I'm not a huge fan of this, like, I just don't like that. And I even personally, like, I don't even see the ads anymore because I have YouTube Premium. But if a video is like 10 minutes and 10 seconds long and there's a lot of like that fumbling going around, like you know that's why they did it. Question number 12 is, do you ever feel self-conscious in your videos? Not anymore. Like I mentioned before, like at the beginning, at blah, blah, blah. Like I mentioned before, at the beginning, yes, 100%. I was super uncomfortable on camera and I didn't know where to look and... It, like, it was something I really wanted to do, but I was not comfortable with it yet. So it's definitely something I've gotten more comfortable with, so I really don't feel self-conscious anymore, unless I'm trying to do, like, a very dramatic eye look, or... I don't know. I really don't feel self-conscious anymore. This is something, like, now in front of the camera, I feel super comfortable, and, like, this is my happy space. I, I love doing this. I wake up so early in the morning so I can have my me time on my vanity, with my makeup, with you guys. No, but like seriously, I woke up at like 3.45 this morning. And our last question, question number 13, is what keeps you inspired to keep creating? And I mean, I feel like, oh, I just did it. I said and. <laughs> I feel like it's just my passion for makeup. I've never gotten into a rut. Maybe that'll happen at some point. But I'm doing this for about a year now, and I still look forward to makeup and not even just new releases i look forward to videos i can do i look forward to how much fun i'm gonna have filming and editing and posting and getting to talk to you guys like if this is something i love doing i love makeup i love talking about makeup i love doing all of this so not only can i actually express myself verbally creatively with all of this i can practice something i love doing and I can connect with other people that also love the same things that I love. For me, it's a no-brainer. Like, I love doing this. It is 100% always going to be a hobby, though. I could never ever see myself doing this full-time. I love my job. And even if I don't work at that job, for whatever reason, I know I will have a day job. This is still going to be my hobby. But that doesn't mean I'm not super passionate and really love doing it. I look forward to this like every day, every week, like, and I feel like I'll keep creating as long as I keep feeling this passion. 
And I hope you guys like my videos too. Like for me, it was a personal challenge because I knew I could do it to do five videos a week. And I know sometimes that annoys people with so much content coming out. But for as long as I can see, unless something huge happens, like we get an apartment and I end up moving, I'm going to keep this schedule for as long as I'm still passionate to keep creating these videos. Because I'm actually, I'm at a point right now where I had too many video ideas for this week. And I might be posting like a bonus video like on Sunday or something because I just I literally had too many things going on and that's always a good problem to have. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys liked this video or found it interesting. And thank you to Annette's Makeup Corner for creating this tag. It was very interesting and I liked going back and actually thinking through each one of these questions and like the journey that I've taken on YouTube so far. So again, let me know down below what other tags you want to see me do on these Tag Tuesdays and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.